Dear uh, students, dear colleagues, dear friends, I'm going to tell you a few things about uh, Caroline from my experience of having known her, uh, worked, worked with her and considered her my friend since uh, 26 years. And I could tell you about how much of an influence she had on me, how she changed me uh, personally, but I'm not going to do that. I, I think I wouldn't get through it. And I think each of us here uh, who knew her uh, has um, their own uh, story about that to tell and to uh, remember. Instead, I just want to pick two things about her that I think can continue to inspire us. And the first has to do with society at large. Fons van Dijk, our good colleague who teaches marketing and branding here at the VUB, uh, said on Twitter after Caroline passed away that the gulf of sympathy that uh, uh, we saw for the brand Caroline Powell's, as he called it, is only comparable with other brands like Luc de Vos or Arno. For those of you uh, who don't know them, these are or were famous Belgian rock stars for whom many people from all layers of society mourned when they died. And I kind of intuitively agreed with uh, Fons van Dijk, but I had to think a bit about why. And then I realized that the likeness is not because Caroline was a rock star, even though she brought some rock and roll to academia. Maybe she was one of the most rock and roll academics in Belgium. But what I think they really had in common was that their public persona and their private persona were one and the same. These people were in public the same as in private and vice versa. There was nothing fake about them at all. And while all of us, to a certain degree, wear a mask when we speak and act in public, this seemed not the case with Luc de Vos, Arnaud or Caroline. And this is so rare and people pick that up immediately. This is fundamentally, I think, what explains the sadness and the sympathy from all corners of society. Even people who would like the VUB to stop existing seemed to be genuinely shaken by her death. To illustrate this, one of the first people to react with sadness was Mr. Theo Franken. Again, for those of you who don't know him, he is a right-wing politician who is seen as rather polarizing, hard, against Brussels and cosmopolitanism, to some extent the opposite of what Caroline stood for. But I think we all remember that when certain activists did everything to stop Mr. Franken from speaking on the VUB campus, to cancel him on a campus that stands for free inquiry and free speech, she personally went to welcome him and to accompany him to the speaking stand. It's not a coincidence that Caroline founded a yearly festival about press freedom and that she called it Difference Day. A bit of a strange title maybe, but for her it was very logical. Freedom equals tolerance. And we should not deny differences, but we should celebrate them and actively try and bridge them. That doesn't mean that she didn't have strong opinions herself. Caroline called herself a radical humanist, and that was exactly how she reasoned and lived her life. I will never forget that every new year she used to leave cards or little presents on our desks at the research center. And one new year, she even left us all as a present, a book. That was the book, Indignez-vous, Be Indignant, by Stéphane Hessel. She really loved the fact that this Stéphane Hessel, at 93 years old, on the brink of dying, had written a book 
with such a strong humanist message. And that he succeeded on the one hand to be very youthful, rebellious, but also to appeal not only to intellectuals or activists or the, conver the already converted, but to everyone. Because it was at the same time also a very warm and a very authentic book. And this is really, I think, what Caroline wanted, also wanted to do. And which was, I think, the great success of her rectorate. Because she was so real, so authentic, without a mask, inspiring and warm, she managed to reach people in Belgium from all ages, backgrounds and layers of society, who, thanks to her, got a much more positive view of that quirky humanist university in Brussels that calls itself reasonably headstrong, redelijk eigenzinnig. And this puts, and that's the first takeaway I wanted to give you, a big responsibility on all our shoulders. To try and ensure everyone in their own way and from their own point of view, that we sustain a university to be proud of, a university that is inspiring, a bit rebellious and headstrong, but warm and open at the same time. And to try and live up to our own moral standards in our work in the same authentic way as she did. The second aspect of Caroline that can continue to inspire us has to do with science and making a career in academia. As also her promoter, Jean-Claude Burgelman, said at another occasion, maybe it could seem in hindsight that the career of Caroline in academia was smooth and easy. From PhD student, almost immediately to young professor, then very quickly to research group director, department head, lead in iMinds, which was later subsumed into iMac, and also quite young, when she became rector. For me, Caroline was the reverse Peter Principle. You know the Peter Principle, everybody gets promoted to the point um, where they are no longer competent. Well, I think she was the reverse uh, of that. She was first a very good researcher, then a really great research group leader, and finally a truly fantastic rector. But in reality, there were also many difficulties, moments when everything seemed to go wrong, when nothing was progressing, when she was very uncertain, almost in despair. A career in science is never easy and filled with obstacles and uphill battles. And what pulled her through, apart from her optimistic personality and her genuine love for students, her hope and trust in young people, was her profound conviction that an academic career should be about two things, excellence and relevance. All of us at her research group, Smith, knew that when we would give a presentation about our research work, usually she would ask at the end only one question. A question that we all feared and dreaded. A very simple question. After finishing our expose, she would simply ask, so what? And this so what question was aimed at two things. First, are you really able to prove your case? Have you done enough? Is your research convincing? Thought true? Is it excellent enough? And at the same time, it meant, how will this concretely have an impact? Do you offer only some general conclusion or do you have concrete, pragmatic suggestions and solutions that can make things better? She hated shallow research, empty words without sufficient proof or research that was divorced from reality. And this was the basis for a second academic spin-off that she founded, the Hannah Arendt Institute. Named after her favorite philosopher, 
This is an institute dedicated to the challenges of present-day citizenship in a diverse, urbanized world. And the way it is set up really exudes Caroline's so what question. It wants to provide not ideology-driven research that can be easily dismissed, but instead thorough evidence-driven research that is able to convince and bring things forward. And it wants to reach policymakers, professionals, and the entire society and really make a difference. So that's the second and the final takeaway that I want to give you. Whether you are a student or a professional researcher at this university, ask yourself from time to time when you feel that you become a little bit too complacent, too self-assured, the so what question of Caroline Powers. It will help you to keep your feet on the ground and to keep on striving for two things, excellence and relevance. Dear students, colleagues and friends, I am very glad that both Difference Day that I talked about before and the Hannah Arendt Institute will continue in the years to come and keep her inheritance alive. But the most important inheritance will be her inspiration and continued call to be authentic and open on the one hand and always insisting on excellence and relevance on the other hand. And I thank all of you for being here, not just to remember her, but also to keep that inheritance alive together here at the VUB and beyond. Thank you.